Hi, this is Dr. A. We're going to look at clinical chemistry considerations for the pediatric patient, and this video is specifically going to be on sample collection. Okay, so let's talk about pediatric phlebotomy. So first of all, they have a smaller blood volume, which then limits the amount that can be drawn. So for example, at uh, 26 weeks gestation, that's an early, early preemie, uh, the, if the baby weighs 0 0.9 kilograms, so if you double that for pounds, it's going to be a 2 point something pound infant, um, newborn, or actually, or preemie, really. Um, if you draw a 10 mil syringe of blood, you have withdrawn 9% of their total blood volume, which is significant. So obviously, you don't want to draw this much, but then if you, even if you consider if you drew only a mil or two, but over the, uh, you know, maybe an ICU stay of several days, well, um, having several blood draws per day, even if each is only about one mil, it adds up, you know, it can easily in a few days add up to 10 mils in nearly 10% of their volume. Uh, if the infant is born at term, it weighs 3.4 kilograms. So again, double that's around a healthy seven pound-ish baby. Um, a, a full syringe would be two and a half percent of their total blood volume um, at 12 months, a year of age. So a 10 kilogram or around 20 pound baby is only 1.4 percent. So still, uh, I mean, still significant. You still want to limit how much you draw. But uh, again, um, of course, as they grow, it's not as much. And then in 24 months, uh, so if they're two years old, it's only about 1 percent of their total um, blood volume. They have small veins, therefore they need small needle needles, but the smaller the needle, the higher the risk of hemolysis. Um, usually the smallest you want to go is a 23 gauge, um, and that can be adequate, but again if they're a little preemie sometimes uh, you know, the needle could be as big as their veins, and that's kind of you know, hard to handle um, and to not damage their veins. Uh, and then of course if there's hemolysis you, have, you can have hyper hyperkalemia, uh, from from the red cells rupturing, um, if you decide to do your capillary sample, uh, which you can do if, if veins are not available, then that would be like a heel stick. Most often is what is done, um, and then you're a lot of times just milking the squeeze in the blood. Hopefully it flows, but a lot of times it has to be kind of squeezed. And there's again a risk of hemolysis and hyperkalemia for the sample from just the whole from the collection procedure. Plus, um, it's you know harder to get more than you know uh, a mil out of the, the baby doing it that way. Um, there are a little bit on the choice of instrumentation for pediatric samples, so you need to look at some of the pre-analytical concerns. So your pediatric sample tubes, so this is an example of some of the microtainer by BD um, phlebotomy um, pediatric sample tubes. Um, these you would have to either collect uh, via a heel stick or if you uh, collect the blood from a syringe and you could use the syringe to fill these. Um, and so these are not meant to be handled by the automated systems. And so, uh, and also once they're open, they are subject to greater evaporation. Uh, and evaporation can even, even be significant and may affect results by as much as 10%. So if you, you know, had, um, if you using here for the chemistry, you had this green top and you filled it and you spun it down and then you pulled off the, the serum and put it in, you know, in a, a small sample tube adapter or something for your analyzer, then all of that, you know, the longer it sits, the more it evaporates, the less sample you have. Um, and then you also want to uh, pick which, you know, judiciously pick the analyzer if you have a choice of course uh, because um, you need to see what's the amount of dead volumes so that's like how much has to be for a chemistry analyzer how much has to be in that adapter cup a small sample cup just for it to be detected and for um, it to be able to aspirate some sample and it's never going to aspirate absolutely everything and so, uh, and if you were, you know, to run it, and is there any way to salvage a sample if a clot, clot or bubble is detected, or is it going to just aspirate what you have and then tell you there's a clot, clot or bubble and you just lost all your sample? So, uh, again, 
and you also want a true random access where you could uh, pull uh, just order only what is absolutely necessary on the sample and not run panels uh, so that you you just use only what you absolutely need to run the sample uh, to get your test results a little bit about point of care analysis in pediatrics. Uh, there are several questions to address when you consider the need for point of care. And this is just also for point of care in general. So uh, does the analyte really require immediate turnaround time for the optimal patient management? Do you need it stat? Do you have to have it run in? Or would taking the sample to the lab and run it on the big analyzer really not make a big difference in um, the time you know, or the, the outcome of the patient? And then who gets to choose what point of care device is going to be used? Is it the lab? Is it the nursing staff? Uh, is it admin? Like who, who's deciding? There are important features that you need to look at in a good point of care device. You do want to be able to lock out untrained users um, so that you don't have um, you know, bad results that are floating out there by people that don't know how to use the equipment. Uh, you want it to have a required QA quality assurance procedure before sample analysis to make sure the machine is working adequately. And you want to be able to download the data into the hospital lab information system or into the chart, the electronic records and all that of the patient. So it needs to interface with the system. Uh, the limitation of point of care is it's usually less precise and it has a limited linear range, meaning if um, there are anything that is above the linear range, there's nothing you can do with a point of care device, you would have to send the sample to the lab. Uh, some of the tests that can be used or done via point of care are blood gases, uh, electrolytes, glucose, activated clotting time, hemoglobin, class A hemoglobin or hemoglobin A1C, pregnancy test, urinalysis, prothrombin time, and rapid streptococcus. Um, and then the testing sites for point of care testing is most often used is going to be the critical care unit or intensive care unit or coronary care unit. Uh, the trauma unit or the emergency department, uh, diabetes clinic uh, within transports, I think ambulance or helicopter transports, uh, and within surgery sites. And that is it for sample collection.